The P iris. What is it? How does it work? Is it the same as the auto iris? A few of the questions we'll be answering in this guide. We've created a large infographic of this topic which you can download from our website. There'll be a link at the end of this video and in the footnotes of this page for you to get there. Before we explain what it is, let's get down to the basics of why you would want to open or close the iris and consequently the aperture size of a lens. Yes, it controls the amount of light that passes through, but did you know that doesn't just adjust the brightness? The depth of field, which is the distance between the nearest and furthest objects that are still in focus without any adjustment to the lens, is also affected by the aperture size. If the aperture is wide open, the depth of field is relatively short. As the size of it is reduced, the depth of field increases. This doesn't only affect the potential position of the object, it works behind the lens too. The depth of focus, which is the distance at which the sensor can be positioned, is also affected. The effect is similar to the depth of field whereby a small aperture gives you a larger depth of focus, and vice versa. So what is an auto iris system? As the name suggests, it is an automatic iris that changes in response to variations in light levels. If there's too much light, the circuitry converts the signal into one that mechanically reduces the size of the iris. Too little, and it opens up. In a DC iris system, the circuitry is inside the camera, while in a video iris, it's in the lens. This system does not respond to anything but light level changes. So although it may have adjusted the amount of light reaching the sensor, other image qualities, such as the depth of field, cannot be controlled. Why constantly change the aperture? Set it to as small as possible so you can have an amazing depth of field. Yes, that would be great, but unfortunately it's not possible. As well as having to have a ridiculously long shutter speed, diffraction starts to become a limiting factor. Iris diffraction. Diffraction is the slight bending of light as it passes around the edge of an object. It is caused by the interference of the light waves with the object and each other as they travel past it. The light travelling right next to the edges of the iris's diaphragm blades is diffracted. As the aperture reduces, the percentage of light that is diffracted increases. Consequently, the sharpness of the image is reduced. So the size of the iris can't be too small as the image quality starts to be affected. The size of the blur circle should also not exceed the size of a pixel on the sensor, otherwise there wouldn't be much of an image to resolve. This is why cameras with small pixels are undesirable in applications where a large depth of field is required. The smaller they are, the less forgiving it is with the blur circle. At the other extreme, if the aperture is too big, spherical aberration can start to have an effect on image quality. In most lenses, light travelling through the centre of a lens undergoes a different magnification than the light that passes through the edges. This is because of the sphere shape that they maintain throughout their body. The result is each ray of light having a different focal point, more so towards the edges. These areas appear blurred in the reproduced image. A spherical lenses don't do this, but they are pretty expensive to make. The P iris. The precise iris was designed to try to overcome all of the drawbacks that we've just mentioned. It doesn't automatically change the size of the aperture just to alter the amount of light that reaches the sensor. It does it to improve the image quality. This is achieved by altering camera settings while the iris is adjusted. The gain, which is the amplification of the image signal level, and the exposure time, which is the duration of its exposure to light. These settings need to be finely balanced as extremes of either can result in unfavourable effects. Too much gain and noise starts to become an issue, whilst too long an exposure time introduces motion blur all whilst taking potential diffraction and aberration effects into account at the same time.
The combination of all of these settings is what makes the P-Iris so much more precise than just opening or closing the aperture in response to variations in light. The latest camera in our portfolio to feature this technology is the JAI Spark. The Automatic Level Control Technology, ALC, designed by JAI, is an advanced auto exposure function that's targeted for outdoor vision applications where the changes in light call for a challenging combination of settings. This works very well in traffic and security applications. The ALC combines the gain and shutter control to achieve optimal exposure, whilst minimising noise and motion blur. Under dark conditions, the exposure time is fixed to a pre-selected value selected by the user to avoid unacceptable motion blur. Simultaneously, the gain is increased to achieve an acceptable exposure level whilst being limited by the maximum amount of noise that is acceptable. At the other extreme, as illumination increases, the gain reduces until it reaches zero, eliminating any noise that was introduced. And yes, the exposure time adjusts simultaneously, reducing itself until it reaches the acceptable minimum. The ALC interface gives you the flexibility to adjust it all to accommodate the dynamic lighting conditions. The controls even allow you to specify which portions of the image to use when making its calculations. So, for example, in vehicle mounted applications, the window can be set to not include the sky when it's making the calculations. You can even set the speed at which the camera reacts to changing conditions and the type of algorithms used when making the calculations. Thanks for listening. Get in touch if you'd like to know more.